My goal with this printer van is to create the ultimate off-grid overlanding 4x4 full-time livable van. When you live off the grid and you live a mobile nomadic lifestyle, your battery system is A, number one, the most important part. Now I have been working with the Battleborn lithium batteries for about a year now. And of all the systems that I've had over the years, that has been game changer. So when it came to building out the new Sprinter van, I chose Battleborn. That is what we're looking at right here on this pallet. I'm gonna unbox some of this stuff and show you exactly what's going in the van and why I chose what I chose. This right here is the Battleborn 100 amp hour 12 volt lithium iron phosphate. This right here is their GC2 battery. This is gonna fit pretty darn well for what I have planned right in the Sprinter van. We've got six of these GC2 100 amp hour Battleborn lithium batteries. The Multi Plus 3000 inverter charger that's going to be inverting the power from the batteries. It's also going to be taking a charge from our shore power and putting power into these batteries so that we can charge anytime we're parked near a 120 outlet. Then right here, we've got the MPPT 15070. This is the solar charge controller that's going to be taking the power from the solar panels up on the roof and turning it into good usable power that is going to charge up this bank of lithium batteries. That's all going to be distributed through this Lynx distributor. All the power coming into it and out of it is all going to be done right here through this device. So we can monitor everything that is going on with the system. We've got the Serbo GX, which is kind of the brain of the monitor. And then we've got the GX Touch 50, this is going to be our monitoring system because one of the most important things about being off grid is being able to monitor your system, knowing what kind of power all of your loads are drawing, what kind of power is coming in through your solar or through your inverter charger. That is all important so that you can make adjustments on the fly according to what your battery needs are. This is all going to be set up here over the rear driver's side wheel well because there is over 250 pounds worth of battery equipment spent a lot of time to build it properly so that it's going to be nice and solid as it's bouncing and vibrating down thousands of miles of dirt roads This was one of my main concerns because this bad boy alone weighs a hefty 40 pounds. So that is all hung off of three quarter inch plywood that is all rib nutted, glued to the rest of the structure here. Up on top across here is where the six Battleborn GC2 batteries will be sitting. So it was very important to make sure that this structure here was nice and solid. All of the rest of the components will be mounted up along here. All the wires will be ran behind the box, pop out to each component, and keep everything nice and organized up here on the side below the shelf. From here, I'm going to disassemble the whole shelf unit, do some upholstering on it, cover it in fabric so that it looks nice and tidy. So now we can see a little bit of the structure that I've built behind here to help support all of this weight. This is inch and a half angle aluminum that is attached to a three quarter inch plywood wall. Everything is solid here. 
all the riv nuts drilled in. Down below here, I've got a piece of one inch aluminum angle, again with riv nuts. On the inside here, I've got wood screws along with glue to help glue this all down and keep it solid. Now, the main concern is that I want all of this removable so that I can pull this wall panel off, do any maintenance, any additions, etc. This of course is all the wiring that runs throughout my walls to all the different components and accessories are all gonna come out here. After 14 straight days working 12 hours a day, I finally got the battery system up and fully functional. The batteries fit nicely here on the shelf. They're nice and secure so that they're not gonna be moving around here inside the van as we bump down dirt roads. Now the reason that I chose these GC2s is the fact that we can hook all of these together in parallel using these bus bars. And the alternative is using the conventional batteries in which you would have to use jumper cables between the batteries. This right here just makes for a nice cleaner, more secure link between all the batteries. Now if we were to build the equivalent size battery system out of let's say flooded lead acid golf cart batteries, we'd be looking at 12 of those batteries and a whopping 720 pounds worth of batteries. But when we go with the Battleborn GC2 batteries, we're actually able to drop it down to six batteries and only 180 pounds. That right there is one of the reasons that lead is dead and that these Battleborn batteries are the way to go anytime it comes to outfitting a van. One of the other important parts anytime you're running a bank of batteries in parallel like this is that you wanna make sure that your positive is coming off the opposite side of the bank as your negative. This assures that it's even power distribution across your whole entire battery bank. Now these four aught battery cables run from the bank behind the cabinet and then they come out here. 
the negative splits off and runs through the shunt over here to the negative side of the Lynx distributor box. The positive runs through the main fuse up through the main switch and over to the positive side of the Lynx distributor box. This device here is what is called the shunt and it's installed in line on the negative side. This device is what is responsible for measuring the amount of current that is going into the battery system and out of the battery system. From here, the monitors are hooked up and when we install a monitor, we'll be able to see exactly what's going on in the overall system. This here is the Victron Energy Lynx Distributor 1000. Now, this is kind of the hub of the whole entire system. Any of the power coming into the batteries, any of the power going out of the batteries, all passes through this box here. And everything is distributed out the bottom, into the back of the cabinet, and out to the other devices. In fact, coming from the Lynx distributor is a 12 volt feed that comes out and over here to my Blue Seas fuse box. From this fuse box, all of my 12 volt accessories are fed power through these wires that spider web out through the van, such as my ceiling lights, my ceiling fan, my 12 volt refrigerator, all of my USB charging, etc. In the system, I do plan on installing a few solar panels, probably anywhere from 300 to 400 watts. And that is going to help maintain my power if I'm out parked somewhere for a few days, perhaps editing where I'd be consuming quite a bit of power to run my computer and my cameras. In fact, while we're at it, the MPPT solar charge controller takes power in from the solar panels on the roof, processes it into good usable power, feeds it back out over into the Lynx distributor, which this then distributes it back into the battery bank above. Now that we've got a bit of an understanding of how energy is flowing through the system, let's talk about what it takes to put energy back into the system once it's been depleted. Now it's all fun and games to have a big giant battery bank like this, but that only means that the bigger the tank, the longer it takes to refill. But that is why I have installed a second alternator here on the engine of the Sprinter van. Now that means anytime the Sprinter van is running and I'm driving, it is pumping a whopping 280 amps back into this system. Nations Automotive actually has designed a kit specifically for these Sprinter vans. It includes a high output alternator, all the nuts, the bolts, the brackets, and the belts that it takes to bolt on a second alternator onto the engine of a Sprinter van. My kit also came with the Wakespeed WS500, which is an external alternator regulator that is programmed to charge these lithium batteries at the proper charge profile. And that's exactly what it's gonna take to keep this thing up and going while I'm out in the backcountry off grid. Now all the way back here at the end of the battery bank, I've got the Victron Multi Plus 3000 inverter charger. Now this thing is going to be responsible for taking the 12 volt DC power and inverting it up to 120 volt AC power in case we wanna use any items or accessories that may require 120 volts. Because it is an inverter charger, anytime the van is parked anywhere near a shore power outlet, I can plug into shore power and this will go ahead and charge the batteries back up and maintain them. All right guys, this concludes the overview video of my Battleborn battery system here inside the Sprinter van. This battery system is going to be responsible for charging my cameras, charging my computers so that I can stay out longer in the backcountry and continue to bring you guys bigger and better adventures. I'd like to give a very special thanks to Battleborn Batteries for making this battery system possible, for helping me design it, helping me to set it up, and coming out and helping me install it. Very special thanks to the folks at Battleborn Batteries. If you guys have made it this far into the video, I'd like to take this opportunity and invite you to go ahead and subscribe to the Living the Van Life YouTube channel. I'd love to have you on board. And if you do hit that subscribe button, make sure and hit the little bell next to the subscribe button because that is what's going to notify you anytime videos like this are uploaded. But most importantly, make sure and hit that like button. Leave a comment in the comment section down below. All right, guys, I'm out of here. Peace out. Keep on trucking.